your number one source for sports. 97.1, The Fan. I think it's a very impressive group as a whole, and I love the thing that they compete. And I could say that about this whole program. Yeah. It's uh, probably the most competitive program I've seen. Not probably, it is. The most competitive program I've seen. And obviously, having been a college head coach, but then when I was out visiting a lot of programs, uh, the competition level here is off the charts. Malik said he's got a lot on his plate this spring. He said he's learned both safety positions. What have you seen from him? Is he kind of been the guy that's, because this is his third spring now, kind of like maybe taking a leadership? Well, I think right now um, every one of those guys is fighting for a job. So I think before you can lead, you, you, need, to, you need to earn that position, right? So any leadership that's happening right now, I think, is more by action than anything else. Um, but I think what we're doing with all the safeties is we're, they're learning both. Because at the end of the day, you don't want to pigeonhole yourself and say, well, really, our, our third best guy can't play that position because he doesn't know the details of it. Mm -hmm. So we have time right now. And you know what we try to do is really teach them both. And then as we get closer to the end of spring and then into preseason camp, we'll narrow it down. You're free, you're strong, and away we go. Greg, in your NFL experience, uh, what was the value? I'm just thinking tomorrow with Pro Day here. What was the value of Pro Day to you? How much stock did you, as a head coach, uh, when you worked with the GM and the scouts, how much value is there in a Pro Day versus what you've seen on this game tape from a player? Well, Pro Day served a few purposes as, a, as an NFL coach, right? If a guy had performed poorly at the Combine, He'll redo some of those things. Say he, I don't know, he ran poorly. He'll run again. You can get a set, another time on him. Um, to be around him, I always like to be around the guys privately where you can talk football and see what they're, you know. So you do it, you have a 15-minute meeting at the combine. Well, what are you going to learn there? That isn't, you bring him in on a visit, but you can only bring, I think the number used to be 30. I don't know what it is now, 30 guys into your facility. Well, that's where you really learn about them. But that's 30 out of how many, uh, you know, 200 and something. So. These pro days, if you can get a private meeting with them and talk some football and you get to know them better and know their intelligence level as far as football intelligence, that's really what it served most. You know, quarterbacks, you want to see them throw, you know, so it'll be a big day for the quarterbacks throwing and, and those kind of things. But do, subconsciously, you take into account he's running on his home field as opposed to running on the neutral track at Indianapolis, I mean, from a time situation? Or... Yeah, I don't think it's a neutral track about Indianapolis yeah. or home track. What it is is when you go to the combine, they purposely make it very stressful. Yeah. So you're up at five, 5 in the morning. You're going for, if you have any medical issue, doctors are yanking on it, pulling on it. Then they're sending you for MRIs downtown. Then you're bussing back or in a, you know, in a van back. You've got to be somewhere all the time. Just the stress of it all, I mean, you've, that has an effect on your performance. But elite athletes are able to block that all out and go perform. And that's what you know, I always look for at the Combine. Can a guy block all that stuff out and go perform at a high level? Because if he can, he's got some mental toughness about him. From an Ohio State perspective, what does a day like tomorrow mean for the program, for your program to have that many NFL guys working out and that many NFL guys here watching them? Well, I think, number one, it speaks to the job recruiting that Coach Meyer and his staff have done, right, because you bring in elite-level players. Then I think it speaks again to the staff and to Mick and all those guys who have developed those players. Right? And, and then to the players themselves, that they've put in the effort and they are gifted. But you know, there's a lot of gifted guys out there that it goes to waste. These are, this is an elite group of guys that have done an incredible job and now have put themselves in position to have a lot of people that really would like to have them on their NFL football team. How are you and Coach Fickle getting along? I mean, uh, you know, we, we always have to ask this because y'all are sort of both coordinators, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it. That, just what's been your work and relationship with him thus far? Oh, it's great. Yeah, we spend a lot, a lot of time together. Yeah. We discuss everything, and I think that's good. You know, it's it's neat for me to have a guy that we just keep bouncing ideas off of, we're back and forth in each other's office or in the meeting room. Uh, it's been very productive, and, and it's it's a work in progress. I mean, we we haven't finished through the whole scheme yet, so we're working as we go. We're training through the event, as they say. Your number one source for sports, 97.1, The Fan. Fan.